when a narcissist hurts you but still misses you very much. Welcome back, everyone. A special greeting to those joining us today. Your presence is truly appreciated and my channel owes its existence to your invaluable support. Thank you so much. Unraveling the intricate dance of narcissists in the realm of rectifying errors is paramount for adeptly navigating relationships with these individuals. It's crucial to discern that their efforts to resolve issues often unfold in a predictable manner. The frequency of reconciling or addressing conflicts with narcissists is deeply ingrained in their penchant for stirring problems and inflicting harm on others. The complexity arises from their steadfast reluctance to admit wrongdoing, a reluctance driven more by a desire to escape consequences than a genuine commitment to making amends. As a result, securing a heartfelt apology from a narcissist remains a rare feat. Delving deeper into this subject, it becomes apparent that narcissists employ distinct strategies to navigate the aftermath of their actions. A prevalent tactic involves expunging any mention of the issue altogether, coaxing you to banish it from your thoughts and steering clear of discussions. Narcissists aim to shield themselves from grappling with uncomfortable truths about their flaws. This approach hinges on the assumption that maintaining silence benefits both parties, allowing them to forge ahead without addressing the underlying cause of the conflict. Get ready for an upcoming video where we'll explore three distinctive strategies frequently employed by narcissists to sidestep accountability and evade the consequences of their actions. By unraveling these tactics, individuals can enhance their ability to navigate relationships with narcissists and make informed choices for their well-being. Armed with awareness, people can establish healthy boundaries and seek resolutions that foster genuine growth and understanding. Narcissists are adept at deploying calculated strategies for successful makeup or reconciliation sessions, manipulating emotions and perceptions to their advantage. One favored tactic involves granting additional time, leading us to the second point of consideration. The art of giving space becomes a powerful tool for narcissists to manipulate others. When a narcissist senses they've caused distress, they may deliberately create distance, avoiding the need for a direct apology or confronting the underlying issue. This intentional withdrawal from communication and interpersonal interactions leaves the affected party in a state of uncertainty. Upon reinitiating contact, the narcissist may adopt a friendly demeanor, complete with smiles and perhaps even gifts, crafting an atmosphere that suggests the absence of any prior conflict. The narcissist's ultimate goal in employing such tactics is to entice the individual back into the relationship without addressing the underlying issues. This requires a certain willingness on the part of the affected individual to perpetuate the connection, as if the past conflicts never occurred. There may even be an expectation to consider a fresh start, overlooking previous events in the hope that a new beginning will lead to a better life. However, the reality often differs, as the enduring presence of narcissistic behavior tends to persist despite the illusion of a fresh start. Engaging in discussions about the past with a narcissist can be challenging. If you bring up their actions, they might label you as negative and stuck in history. They diligently work to convince you that discussing the past is detrimental, essentially advocating for leaving it behind and focusing on the present. I frequently noticed that narcissists adhere to two distinct sets of rules. When they make mistakes, admitting fault or taking responsibility is out of the question. However, if you're at fault, they willingly delve into the topic, making you feel immensely guilty and coercing you into making amends. This double standard is unacceptable, but let's revisit the time-related aspect. Narcissists believe the time they offer should be sufficient for you to move on without any need for apologies or accountability. 
To swiftly conclude a conversation with a narcissist, they might pretend to agree with you, nodding and seemingly engaged. It's all an act to give the appearance of attentiveness without any genuine responsibility. Narcissists never admit wrongdoing. They perceive themselves as infallible. Even when they say sorry, it's a generic expression lacking sincerity. Phrases like, I did it wrong, I'm sorry, etc., are among their favourite catchphrases designed to create an illusion of reasonableness rather than true responsibility. In the third scenario, narcissists frequently turn to seduction as a means to restore a semblance of normalcy. They believe that engaging in sexual activities can efficiently resolve issues without the need for direct confrontation. In times of crisis, they may shower you with affection, treating you as if you're their most prized possession. However, it's crucial to recognize that their intimacy serves as a tool to manipulate your emotions and divert attention from the pain they caused. Despite appearing emotionally connected, engaging in sexual relations with narcissists weakens your spirit. Both male and female narcissists employed closeness to feign care and interest, effectively masking the underlying issues. Narcissistic behavior goes beyond avoiding discussions about flaws. It often involves the strategic use of various tactics to uphold their meticulously crafted image. This intentional effort to project an image of perfection can manifest in behaviors ranging from deflecting blame onto others to projecting an inflated sense of self-worth. By gaining an understanding of these additional tactics, individuals can navigate relationships with narcissists more effectively and strive to cultivate healthier connections. One prevalent strategy employed by narcissists is gaslighting, a manipulative technique aimed at making others doubt their own perceptions and reality. This insidious form of psychological manipulation can leave individuals feeling confused and questioning their own sanity. Unraveling the complexities of such tactics requires a careful examination of narcissistic behavior and an awareness of the psychological toll it can take on those around them. In addition to unveiling the tactics used by narcissists, it's vital to emphasize the significance of establishing boundaries in relationships. Creating clear and unwavering boundaries serves as a safeguard for emotional well-being, preventing manipulation by narcissistic individuals. Encouraging open communication and fostering a supportive environment are essential steps in empowering individuals to freely express their thoughts and concerns without the fear of retaliation. Our aim is to dispel misconceptions by revealing the truth. Are there additional tactics that narcissists employ to bolster their image? I genuinely hope this discussion provided valuable insights. If it did, please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Feel free to express your opinions on today's content. To receive more videos from us, consider subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell icon for notifications. Additionally, for exclusive perks and to support us, you can become a channel member for just $1. As always, thank you for your continued viewership. Narcissists are one of the most dangerous types of people to deal with because they are manipulative and only see other people as tools to help them reach their own goals, which they will only brag about and never actually achieve. They only see us as stepping stones. Narcissists see other people as nothing more than tools they can use to reach their own goals and objectives. Anyone who doesn't see you as a whole person with all of your thoughts and goals will never earn your respect. Narcissists need to be in charge all the time, and being close to someone they can't control is one of the most upsetting and unstable things for them. In addition, the narcissist would not be able to stand any of this person's other traits, making them a big problem for them. This person makes their life miserable and can drive narcissists crazy. It means they could lose, and narcissists hate losing. It's frustrating for them, 
when they can't get what they want or get the person they want. Narcissists are hurt when they lose something, like a game, a job, or even a love relationship. It hits them hard and reminds them that they can't control everything or everyone. This is something that can happen no matter what. Somebody with the mindset of someone who can drive a narcissist completely crazy will have a lot of the traits that narcissists hate about other people. Still, I'd like to thank everyone who watched this movie before we even talk about that. I'd also like to welcome anyone who is new to this show and thank them for coming. The movie today will show you some personality traits that narcissists really don't like. Don't worry if you don't have all of them. If you can keep your cool, the narcissist will quickly lose interest in you if you have at least two of them. One, people who don't cross their lines. The first person who can drive a narcissist crazy is someone who knows their limits and sticks to them. To put it another way, you should never think less of them. They don't want to do what other people tell them to do. Narcissists who try to push their will on these people will be strongly turned down. People who are set in their ways and won't give in are probably the ones that narcissists hate the most. Narcissists will get angry if someone tries to stop them from taking over other people's time or life. They'll go crazy over this. 2. Not scared. If someone meets the second requirement, they must not be afraid of the narcissist in any way. So, they don't have much trouble addressing or correcting the narcissist when they need to. To stop it, they would also tell them when they are lying or not being honest. People who are narcissists have a hard time getting along with others because they can't relax when they're with someone like this. 3. Someone who doesn't find the narcissist's antics interesting. The third sign is someone who is not impressed by the narcissist. This means they have not bought into the narcissist's false view of themselves. It takes them a long time to notice or praise the narcissist's good work. Before getting too close, people like them want to be sure that the person they're meeting is who they say they are. They're not in a hurry to meet new people or make new friends. Because of this, believing someone takes a lot more than a nice smile and a perfect appearance. 4. Someone who makes narcissists feel little. Lastly, someone who makes the ego think he or she is not important. Based on the other things I've talked about, it's clear that this person doesn't trust the narcissist and would try to keep the narcissist out of the situation as much as possible. This means that no one will ask them to come to their homes and they also won't accept narcissists' invitations. No matter how much time they have, this person doesn't want to spend with the narcissist. Because of this, they are more likely to ignore or grave rock the narcissist when they act in a strange way. 5. Someone who has done better in life than the ego. 5. Someone who is successful or has something the narcissist doesn't have. For example, one person might be married while the narcissist is single. It's also possible that the narcissist doesn't have a car or a house or the other person does. The narcissist might not be able to go on trips, but the other person might. Narcissists don't want other people to be able to have or do something that they can't, even if it's just a little thing. Narcissists are jealous people who don't like it when other people do better than them. Number 6. Someone with a free spirit. Someone is free-spirited if they enjoy life and do the things they love without caring what other people think. That's how we get to the character flaw. They don't care what other people think or how they look to other people. Another person who is the exact opposite of narcissism makes the narcissist sick because they can't stand being around them because they wish they were living their life the way that person is. This is called narcissistic envy. Nasty people don't like it when other people are always happy and free spirits are usually carefree and happy most of the time. People who are narcissists find it very annoying when other people show real happiness and joy. 
The thought of what these other people have makes the narcissist crazy because they can never have it. They don't like it when other people talk more than they do because it makes them feel less important. In any case, people who aren't afraid to say they're wrong are much more important. It makes narcissists happy to talk about how great they are and show off their achievements. A few of the things they are known for are complaining, rumours and telling interesting stories. There are many lies that narcissists tell, and most of them are complete lies. Nasty people are afraid of people who talk a lot and tell the truth, because those people can get people's attention and focus on themselves because of how interesting they are. Really, everything comes down to one word, authentic. It's the thread that ties together all the traits I just talked about. Someone with authentic character is honest in every part of their life. They stick to a clear way of doing business. Everything you want is what you get when you work with them. Narcissists are dishonest and believe that everyone else is the same. The narcissist doesn't want anything good for you. The narcissist thinks that there should be no room in the world for real people. It must be true that all of them are lying. When these people act in these ways, the narcissist will get angry, irritated and uncomfortable, and they will have to hide behind their shell. My list of things to do is now over. The other good thing about this person is that they know more about how narcissists work. It is best for the narcissist to end a violent relationship. They know they can't trick this person, and what's worse, they know this person is likely to figure out who they really are. To stay away from people who fit this description, narcissists usually make a plan to leave or do everything they can to stay away from them. What these people have going for them is the truth, and narcissists hate the truth so much. This kind of person is honest with everyone they meet, as well as with themselves. The narcissist would stay away from them, because they aren't afraid to tell or hear the truth. Narcissists are afraid of these people because they are everything that a narcissist is not. Narcissists do bad things, but people who have these traits or act in these ways can shine a light on them and stop them. If they want to control someone, all they can do is plant doubt and suspicion in the hopes that some of them will grow or that someone else will feel the same way about them. To get rid of this guy, they need to get him to work with them. When narcissists can't change or control someone, they hate them so much that they want to kill them. Especially for narcissists, people with a lot of the traits I've listed here today are their worst fear. For the reason that they are always honest, set clear limits, and aren't pleased by the narcissist. When the narcissist comes near, they don't show any fear. They are being honest. They are having a great time. There is a good sense of awe and reverence in them and in life. They can spot toxic people and stay away from them, even though this may not be the most important feature. Nasty people can't change things like this. That's all we have to do for today. Feel free to leave any questions or thoughts in the box below. Thanks a lot for paying attention. Once a narcissist perceives that you fully understand their nature, they find themselves with little left to achieve or manipulate. It becomes apparent that you lack enough concern for them to fall into the victim role, as playing the charming card is no longer advantageous. The avenue for manipulating you through emotional connections is closed, signalling the end of your support to them. However, this doesn't necessarily mean they will disengage from you immediately. While they may lose the ability to control you directly, they might still possess the capacity to influence those in your proximity, impacting you indirectly. Unfortunately, many narcissists don't swiftly move on to a new target. Instead, they often have multiple individuals in their crosshairs simultaneously, working to undermine and harm them concurrently. Due to the vindictive and malicious nature of narcissists, their list of victims continuously grows. Indeed, their circumstances are altered when a supply source is cut off. 
Therefore, whether you've implemented a no-contact policy, established clear boundaries to actively avoid the narcissist, or confronted them about their manipulative tactics, the narcissist recognises when their emotional games with a specific individual have concluded and their remaining objectives are minimal. Consequently, today narcissists employ three distinct methods to handle individuals whom they can no longer manipulate or control. Depending on how well the narcissist knew you, they might have employed any or all of the aforementioned strategies. However, their responses are rooted in the perception of you as a significant threat. This arises from the intense discomfort narcissists feel when someone exhibits too much power or discernment regarding their actions. In the face of such perceived threats, their fears and insecurities escalate significantly, compelling them to devise strategies to once again regain control and alleviate their discomfort. They resort to humiliation. Upon realizing your resistance to manipulation, a narcissist's initial response often involves devaluing you, and this can manifest in various ways. The narcissist may aim to cause embarrassment, employing tactics such as spreading malicious rumors, engaging in slander, or orchestrating disinformation campaigns to completely discredit and devalue you. Their goal is to make others dismiss and isolate you. The narcissist believes that if they can't control you directly, they won't allow you to escape unscathed and continue living your life. Consequently, they may undermine any existing relationships you have. Even though you have successfully fortified your defences and are impervious to direct manipulation, the narcissist may still exploit those in your proximity that are more vulnerable or less discerning in their attacks. The primary objective is to diminish your favourability and support. The narcissist aims for you to lose the favour of as many people as possible, ensuring they won't believe you if you ever try to warn them about the narcissist. They strive to outshine you in every aspect. When unable to manipulate or control you, narcissists often become intensely competitive. Despite their lack of control over you, they go to great lengths to surpass your achievements. Narcissists are driven to prove their superiority over others in some way. Thus, they continuously compare their lives to yours, hoping for your encounters with adversity. The narcissist aspires to possess a larger residence, a more extravagant car, a more captivating life partner, and a more progressive professional path than you. To outdo you, they might aim to have at least two children if you have only one. They may accumulate personal debt and feign success to create the illusion of living a more privileged life than you. When they lose control and the ability to manipulate you, a sense of competition arises. While feigning happiness and success is a routine practice for them, the narcissist specifically seeks the perception or experience of outperforming you. The departure is here. When a narcissist finds themselves unable to exercise control or manipulation over someone, their final recourse is to dismiss or emotionally distance themselves from that individual. The mere presence of someone beyond their control can be intolerably distressing for the narcissist, compounded by the individual slipping from their grasp. The narcissist prefers not to invest any more time in someone who sees through their facades. Such individuals irk the covert narcissist immensely. Consequently, the narcissist moves on to more fertile grounds where they can discover new individuals to manipulate and control given the inherent risks of being around someone who might expose them. In conclusion, however, it is crucial to remember that control is paramount for the narcissist. The incapacity to manipulate an individual signifies a loss of control, something the narcissist is unlikely to accept and overlook. Typically, their aim is to tarnish your reputation to evade detection, or they operate covertly to pilfer your possessions. They cannot stand leaving individuals unscathed. 
Narcissists never find reconciliation with those who have managed to break free. Retribution is constantly in their plans, waiting for the right opportunity. For this reason, they should never be given another chance to approach us. Until then, I would love to hear from you. Please share your thoughts and experiences on today's topic in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, do give it a thumbs up. Everyone have a blessed